And many stories I've told over the years where it's made such a, um, a profound change in the direction of the care of the patient um, that it's really made me sort of an evangelist of ultrasound. And, um, and that, those kinds of cases, I mean, you can read about ultrasound studies in the literature all day long, but when you have actual patients that you've taken care of, um, and I'll tell you a couple of those stories right now where it's really made a huge difference. I had a 26-year-old uh, a female who came in, and she was having severe shortness of breath. She was um, um, obviously a young gal, and um, her blood pressure was 70 over 40. Her heart rate was in the 140s, and she was a bus driver, and she recently started taking some oral contraceptive pills. She was a smoker, and she was obese. And she was having profound shortness of breath, but she also described this sort of vague chest pain that was going on as well, chest discomfort, she called it. And, um, and you know, her father was in the room with her. We were in bed five. And, um, and she reached out, and she grabbed my arm, and she said, Doctor, I feel like I'm going to die. Don't let me die. Now, when a patient who's 99 years old says that to you, which is not uncommon, actually, um, you know, um, it, puts the heat on you to do your job and do it well. Uh, but when a young person says that to you, a 26-year-old woman says that to you, I don't care how long you've been doing this job, it, it kind of shakes you a little bit. And uh, you, know, you literally think to yourself, boy, I, I hope you don't die. Um, but uh, so we, um, in, in the taking care of her, you know, when you start looking at all her risk factors, it seems that she's having a pulmonary embolism. And, um, and to make the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism, um, you can send a patient to a CAT scan machine, um, but they need to be stable to do that. You don't want to put somebody in a CT scanner whose blood pressure is 70 over 40 and who's about to code on you, because running a code in CT is the last thing you'd ever want to do. So I went ahead and brought the ultrasound machine over, because I know that on ultrasound, in the setting of a massive pulmonary embolism, um, in a situation where I am going to consider pushing a drug like TPA, thrombolytics, to, to bust up the clot, um, I know that the right side of the heart which is normally smaller than the left side of the heart, the right side of the heart actually gets as big or even larger than the left side of the heart. And so that RV strain in the setting, in the right clinical setting, um, would really push my hand to give thrombolytics. So I had the nurse get the thrombolytics box out, and uh, you know she was mixing it up. And I explained this to the patient and to the father, that the risks of this drug are very high. It can, can actually kill you um, when you give the drug. Um, can cause a brain bleed. It's got a lot of risks to it. So I took the ultrasound transducer and I put on the patient's heart and I was expecting to confirm my suspicion of a large right ventricle. Well instead what I saw was pericardial tamponade. And immediately I look over at the nurse, excuse me, did you already push the thrombolytic? No? Good. Because that would have been the exact wrong thing to do for this patient. It would have likely ended in her death. And discovering a tamponade later after pushing the thrombolytic would have made the procedure of pericardiocentesis um, fraught with complications of bleeding. And instead, all I had to do was put a needle through her chest and pull out the fluid, which I did. And we pulled off 700 cc's of straw-colored fluid, and the diagnosis turned out to be lupus. And, and that's emergency medicine for you because, you know, um, and the, on, you know you Monday morning, we call it Monday morning quarterbacking. You start asking questions three days later after I make the diagnosis at two in the morning. And, you know, maybe it becomes clear what the diagnosis was with a lot more questioning of the patient, a lot more history, subtle physical exam findings of a rash on the face, things like that that in emergency medicine in the setting of a person I've never met before who's got unstable vital signs, I need to reach for any tool I can in order to make the diagnosis. And so that's um, just one of many examples that comes to mind.